Hello, my name is Andrew Hung. Greetings from Los Angeles, California in the United States. Thank you to the Chinese University of Hong Kong for inviting me to this talk. I'm going to share with you artificial intelligence in urology. I am uh, supported by an intuitive surgical clinical research grant as well as an R01 grant from the National Cancer Institute here in the United States. So today I'd like to share with you what is artificial intelligence, how AI is used in the diagnosis of urologic diseases, AI in the treatment and prognostic prediction in urologic diseases, how AI is used in surgical education, its limitations, and a few words about the future outlook. So first, artificial intelligence, or AI, is the ability of a machine to independently replicate the intellectual processes typically seen in human cognition. And what is machine learning? Well, it is a subset of artificial intelligence where computer algorithms can parse through data, learn from the data, and then apply what it has learned to make informed decisions. Deep learning is yet a subset of machine learning where the algorithms are inspired by the structure of the human brain with many interconnected neurons which collectively make greater insights. And as you can see here, the publications in AI and urology have truly skyrocketed in the last several years uh, from increased interest and uh, applications. Today I will share with you uh, applications in diagnoses, prediction, and surgical education. So let's start with diagnoses. Here's the typical workflow for uh, diagnostic um, uh, studies using AI. First, the data, most of which is body imaging, such as CT or MRI, where areas are of, of interest are segmented, so data segmentation, and in this case, where a tumor may reside, then feature extractions. What are the features of this uh, particular area? Well, what is the tumor intensity? What is its shape? What is its texture? Then there is model training where this set of data or features is tagged to a particular clinical uh, label such as gene expression or uh, pathology uh, 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 result such as a malignant versus a benign tumor. And finally, there's validation of your trained model using uh, internal uh, data that may be associated or truly external data, which is completely unrelated to the initial training uh, data set. So in the realm of radiomics, here are a few examples of uh, application. So uh, this is automatic segmentation. So previously for MR ultrasound fusion biopsies, it requires the ultrasound images of a patient to be merged or synchronized with that of the M, uh, MR imaging. Uh, this is truly a uh, labor-intensive process that can be prone to error. But what if you could automatically register the MR and ultrasound images together? Well, using AI-based radiomics, we're now able to reduce the error uh, in this uh, merging of these two data sets to approximately one millimeter. For cancer detection, these are MR prostate images. How do they relate to the biopsy pathology results? Well, if you look at AI-based radiomics, the uh, area under the curve, the AUC, is very, very strong in predicting or anticipating what the correct pathology is. Uh, and this does outperform what uh, trained radiologists using the PIRADS classification system are able to do. Cancer classification, similar model. This is for uh, looking again at MR of the prostate, uh, predicting what the Gleason score may be. Here are the AUCs. Again, pretty robust performance. And again, with prostate cancer, MR imaging, these, in this case, looking at the capsule for extracapsular extension, looking at all the features there. Again, radiomics outperforms uh, 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 manual review by trained radiologists. In pathomics, this is uh, the PAGE prostate software where it can exclude up to 75% of pathology slides that don't need to be reviewed. 
while retaining 100% sensitivity in being able to identify where malignancy is, where the benign tissue is, and where there are suspicious lesions that require further evaluation. For genomics, this is uh, an example of liquid biopsies where uh, 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 DNA sequences from the blood is drawn uh, and sequenced, plugged into AI classifiers to predict cancer, which was otherwise previously unknown or ambiguous. And looking at uh, the predicted cancer types versus the actual diagnosed cancers in the, in, in the body, uh, this is a confusion matrix. You see that prostate, bladder, and renal cell carcinoma all perform very robustly with high accuracy. Shifting gear a little bit, we're still in diagnoses. This is computer vision uh, endoscopy. This is uh, a cyst example of cystoscopy where uh, we're trained to look for uh, bladder tumors, whether they are small, large, multiple, whether they're flat, and even flat under blue light. Uh, computer vision, which is AI-based, can detect these lesions with high sensitivity as well as specificity. This is from the University of California, Irvine, Jamie Lamon's group. Again, uh, with ureteroscopy, identifying uh, kidney stones with very high confidence, whether it's a struvite stone, uh, calcium monohydrate, cysteine, or uric acid stones. Again, with high accuracy, actually outperforming trained uh, endourologists. Shifting gear now to prediction. This is looking at bladder cancer, nodal metastases before immunotherapy, uh, uh, evaluating the histogram, uh, the texture values before treatment, plugged into a machine learning model, could predict uh, with a very high accuracy 12-month progression-free survival. Uh, this is use of machine learning to predict early biochemical recurrence after robotic prostatectomy utilizing both patient and surgery um, uh, details, the machine learning-based models outperform the classic Cox regression in predicting biochemical recurrence. And saving the best for last, well, this is my own uh, work from my, uh, my group here at the University of Southern California. For the last five years, we have recorded surgery uh, data during the robotic prostatectomy synchronized surgical video alongside systems data directly from the DaVinci robot. This systems data has included uh, the motion tracking of the instruments as well as events such as camera use or uh, energy use. Uh, such data has been summarized as automated performance metrics. The simplest example is the active moving time of each of the instruments during surgery. The more sophisticated uh, metrics may have to do with the wrist articulation the degrees of wrist articulation that happen during oper an operation. This is the first publication uh, where we introduce the concept of automated performance metrics here in the Journal of Urology's cover. Uh, these are two surgeons performing the exact same step of the prostatectomy. One is uh, an expert surgeon, the other is a novice. Uh, as you can see, they are doing the same step but look completely different. The red is the, the tip of the right-hand instrument, the green is the tip of the left-hand instrument, the black, uh, the endoscope. And uh, clearly an illustrative example of how surgery looks different uh, using such motion tracking data. Since there's so much data, we decided that we would use machine learning to process all this information to give us some insight, clinical insights. So each case of the prostatectomy would record a set of automated performance metrics. We would associate those metrics with clinical labels, such as time uh, spent in the hospital after surgery. We would train a, a machine learning model with such data, and then a brand new case comes by, we wanna figure out, well, is this patient gonna stay in the hospital for one or two days, which is expected length of stay, or more than two days? The model would predict us approximately 85% accuracy, whether which way this would go. And this was published in JAMA Surgery in 2018. That was our first paper using machine learning. This is our most contemporary paper in the European Urology Focus, where we use a deep learning-based survival analysis using surgeon data, patient factors to predict time to urinary continence recovery after prostatectomy. We know that surgery uh, relies on patient outcomes and surgeon outcomes to predict continence, uh, urinary continence recovery. 
The patient factors include the age of the patient, his body mass index, comorbidities. Surgeon factors included not only the automated performance metrics, these measures of efficiency, but also technical skills evaluation. These uh, examples these include, while during the vesicle anastomosis, needle positioning, how well the surgeon holds the needle, the angle that the needle enters the tissue, and how well the surgeon drives the needle through the tissue while rotating his or her wrist. Using this data to predict time to urinary continence recovery, again, using a deep learning model, if you use the automated performance metrics, the area under the curve was approximately 0.6. If you utilize the technical skills to predict uh, the time to urinary continence recovery, the performance improves to 0.7. If you combine all the data available to us, the patient factor, the technical skills of the surgeon, the surgeon's efficiency metrics, the APMs, then you have a, a area on the curve of 0.8. Shifting gear a little bit, this is not about efficiency, but the decisions that a surgeon makes to uh, complete an operation, the individual gestures that they utilize to complete the task. We initially described this during the partial nephrectomy, the hyalur dissection. We know that the surgical movements are either active tissue dissection movements or supporting maneuvers. And within the, the dissection gestures, uh, there are these different uh, 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 movements that we have described, whether they are blunt dissection or uh, uh, sharp dissection or combination complex movements. If you take a sequence of data, uh, excuse, excuse me, a sequence of video, and you decode it based on these individual gestures, you would get a sequence of surgery. And it may look like spread, spread, hook, burn, peel, etc. Now, going back to the robotic prostatectomy, uh, here you see the sequence of the first 100 dissection gestures a surgeon utilizes during the neurovascular bundle preservation step. Each row is a different operation. And the, these cases, these 22 cases that I show you, are ones where 12 months after surgery, the patient did not recover erectile function. These additional 18 cases with these sequences, the patients did recover function uh, 12 months after surgery. And as you could see, well, what you don't see here is that when you plug such data into a machine learning model, we can now predict with an 80% accuracy whether the patient will recover function or not 12 months after surgery. There are some limitations to AI-based studies. Can you reproduce the results using the same technique and even the same data set just from different investigators? Can you replicate the data? Can you use the same technique but a different data set and a different set of uh, investigators? We think that the future of AI-based studies must adhere to certain reporting standards. The full disclosure of all the details utilized and ideally even open source sharing of the data. And a brief word, a, a, a brief peek at what the future may look like. This is actually the past, but can you use AI-assisted technology to create autonomous surgery? And this is an example of a STAR uh, from several years ago already where, yes, in fact, uh, automated uh, uh, surgery is uh, a, a real possibility. So my take-home message is that truly AI applications in the diagnosis, prognosis, prognostic prediction and surgical education for urologic diseases is already here. The performances of these models uh, is uh, robust, uh, but there is a word of caution. Can you reproduce these results? Can you replicate these results? That remains to be seen, and we should be held uh, to those standards moving forward. And thank you so much for your time.